So hi guys, we just uh, wait for another minute and after that we'll start. Just let everyone in. Okay, I think we can start. So hi everyone. Thank you for joining our FinTech Marathon. This is our first day of uh, four day sessions uh, and I hope you will join all of them. If you've been to our previous marathon, which was dedicated to dig digital, welcome back. So just wanted to say a few rules uh, about um, how you can ask questions. So please put all your questions into Q&A box uh, for the speaker and after his speech and presentation, you'll be able to answer them. Chat is for you guys just to use and uh, to, to chat between each other. But if you have a particular question for the speaker, please put them in Q&A. Also remember that we have special keywords in each presentation and don't miss them. Uh, after four days, you'll be able to build a phrase and please share it to employer branding mailbox uh, so we can send you a gift uh, afterwards. Uh, and um, I would like to present our first speaker today, Louis Cameron. He will be talking about progressive web apps for financial services. So please welcome and passing the word to him. Right, thank you. Um, all right, so today we're going to talk progressive web apps for financial services. So the agenda is, um, so first of all, we're going to talk about what is a progressive web app and how we can build one and why PWA, progressive web apps, is actually matter these days. Um, and we're going to explore one use case for financial service and my final thoughts on it. So what is a progressive web app? So according to Wikipedia, uh, it's a web apps that's actually using those emerging web browser APIs and features along with the traditional progressive enhancement strategy to bring this native app-like user experience to cross-platform web applications. So before actually understand what, what the, are those web browser APIs and those features and what is a native app-like, so we need to have a bit of uh, background um, history. So uh, we know mobile is actually the key factors to actually driving this internet of revolution. And uh, we use more mobile devices these days than uh, desktop computers. And it's been this way since 2014. And on, on mobile, the user spend most of their times in native apps rather than in the web. In fact, they spend 87% on their times on native apps versus only 13% on mobile web. And when you ask why, why is that? Um, the user often say, you know, um, native apps is more predictable. Um, it's easy to find on the home screen and there's loads of features like push notification, um, sensors like camera, microphone, and so on. Um, and so it means should we just abandon, uh, do web and just start to building uh, native apps? Uh, of course not, right? So um, actually there's a flip side on the native app usage. Um, the, the native apps is actually really high concentrate. So the user is actually just tending to install and use just a few app. And if you, your app is not on the top apps that the user use, uh, just too bad for you, right? So, and in several surveys, um, the user says, you know, 
have a native app is a really big commitment in terms of space and, and, and cost and time. Um, and another factor is the number of apps that the users install per month. Uh, the average is zero, uh, which is, if you contrast with the mobile users uh, on the web, um, they visit over than 100 websites per month. Um, and that's actually the power of the web, right? So URL links, the whole nature of the web is more um, approachable. Uh, another way to actually uh, understand and the difference between native apps and web apps is actually contrast the capability versus uh, the reach. So native apps are super capable, we know, that because there's loads of features, um, push notification and and the sensors, um, but the, it's a bit of uh, limited in terms of reach because you need uh, a particular version for each platform, one for Android, one for iOS, and the there's a bit of a limitation in terms of reach here, um, but. And another side on the web, um, the, the reach is really high, right? Because uh, it is a cross-platform, but by nature, you just need a web browser. Um, it's safer, the permission model of the web is, is really respectful in terms of the privacy. Um, and it's simple actually to build a, a web app, right? And developing and deployment the whole uh, process of development is quite uh, simple and that's actually increased the reach. Um, but you know, it doesn't matter how how easy and how many people is actually using your web app. If he, you don't have the same capabilities of the native web, um, the people is not gonna keep using that. And uh, the progressive web app is, is exactly that. So they try to combine the capabilities of the native app and the reach of the web uh, and try to have the best of the both worlds. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty much bring uh, the web app to another level, improving the quality quite a lot and the whole end-to-end -end, uh, user experience. All right, to improve the quality of the web app, we have to focus in four areas. So first of all, it's speed. So make sure the app is fast. Um, the second is uh, integrated. So making the experience more integrated. We should have um, any difference between a native and, and, and a web app. Um, ensure that is uh, that works reliable, and um, and the last is engaging. So we need um, fire in this case. So fast, integrate, reliable, and engaging. All right. So let's uh, take a look uh, in a bit about that in each one of these properties. So the first one is fast. So the user actually expect the app loads fast um, and have like this smooth scrolling, no lagging, no freezing, um, and and that's actually the performance that we need to focus here. So to make sure the web app loads fast. Um, so we all know that uh, time is money and the performance really matter on the web. Um, for example, if your website takes more than three seconds to load, 20% uh, of the user will give up and abandon your site. And there's some studies actually show even worse results. If you, like after three seconds, 50% of the users will abandon your, your site. So in short, actually speed, it's a must. That's something you need, you really need uh, to have. Um, 
So one technique is actually is set a performance budget in your whole building process when you are building your web app. Um, you can use a lighthouse, for example, to actually you can set and profile your app uh, with this uh, performance budget. Um, another uh, technique is actually, and really good practice is actually optimize all the image that you have um, using uh, something like image mean, for example, to compress all the images. Uh, of course, using the right image format, um, replace heavy images like animated GIFs to, uh, with videos to load fast. Um, the whole responsive images approach, uh, that's a really good one because you're gonna serve the right image with the right uh, dimension with the, for each resolution. Uh, and uh, WebP, these new formats for images, which has a really good compression, uh, especially for the web. That's actually, especially for web. Um, all right, the next one is uh, lazy loading. So lazy loading is actually a really good approach in general for, for speed. Um, you can use this technique for images, uh, videos, and even iframes uh, these days. Um, the browser uh, can support natively the image lazy loading. Uh, there's a new flag on the image tag on the HTML that you can use, but if your browser doesn't support that, you can use uh, plugins like the lazy sizes uh, that you can do the, the lazy load for, for the images. All right, the next is actually optimize the JavaScript. Uh, here is pretty much like trying to reduce the JavaScript payload uh, with uh, code splitting. Uh, and have like just the minimum for, for the JavaScript and of course remove all the unnecessary code and unused modules. There's another uh, tool or tooling for that is actually tree shaking that's actually gonna remove all the unnecessary code and of course minimize and compress all the files. Uh, another good practice is actually prioritize the resource. So preload all the critical assets uh, that you need. For example, style sheets, that's, a, that's, a, that's something that helps on performance and it's gonna improve the speed and prefetch uh, the resources. Um, for, for example, if you know the user is gonna navigate to this next page, you can prefetch those resources and that's gonna uh, improve the performance as well. All right, the next section here is actually integrated. Um, to have like this integrated feeling, what I mean by that is actually the user shouldn't actually go to the web browser, open a tab and then access your, uh, your app. Uh, the whole idea is actually have this, uh, um, integrated experience. So in fact, the user shouldn't even note they are actually on the web. Uh, that's the whole app-like experience that I said before. And um, the user should be able to actually interact with the same way that they interact with all other apps on their device. Um, the user actually expects to, to launch uh, that app the same way on the same place that they launch other apps. And when the app is open, they, they want to see that uh, app open on the, on the test manager as well, same way that they see other apps. Uh, and of course have all the capabilities and hardware access that other have, app, apps have. Um, another Good example here is actually the web payments and that's that's a new API um, and that's a really good way to keep the user in the flow um, because you don't need to actually uh, ask to the user fill out those complex checkout forms. With the web payment API, um, they actually simplify in a few 
steps uh, this whole payment um, process. And uh, you can even integrate with other apps uh, like PayPal or Android Pay. Uh, that's a really good um, API, and that's something I'm 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 studying these days, and uh, and want to give a talk uh, later about that. Um, all right, another uh, web API is actually the the web audio API that you can have like this media playback, uh, even on the locked screen, you can see that media is actually playing. Uh, and another one is actually uh, uh, WebRTC. It's another API that you can build like video chat apps, uh, for instance, um, and you can have this integrated feeling. Um, all right, so next section uh, here is uh, reliable. So the web app, uh, must be reliable. So well, what I mean here is actually when the user tap to, to the home screen on the icon of your app, they expect to load instantaneously. So um, I know when, when you talk about web, uh, we always think, of course, you know, that must be online and have the internet connection. But uh, we need to change this, this, this perception. So, because the connection is not always there. Um, we need to give this offline support and there's a few techniques for offline support. We're gonna explore one here. And, but we should uh, realize uh, mobile phones uh, are not always online. And maybe because that the user turn on the uh, airplane mode or they are on the subway on the tube and um, they doesn't doesn't have the service or even when they have the four bar signal uh, doesn't mean they have a live connection so mobile apps actually should never um, show the, the blank page um, when it's offline um, we should always try to, to, you know, provide a custom offline page uh, or, or even show a previous content with this, with a banner saying, you know, you're offline. And, uh, and make this web app really reliable and even when the network uh, isn't there. So that's one thing. So engaging. So an engaging app is actually goes beyond the functionality, right? So to ensure the whole experience is great um, and uh, making easy to the user to do what they need to do. Um, and push notification is actually one uh, good example for that. The push notifications actually exist for a while, but Finally, we as a web developers, we have access to that feature and, um, and push notification actually works even when the, the browser is closed. Um, yeah, so on mobile device, you know, push notification is actually really fundamental or, or really key part to turn the, the, the monthly active users to a daily active users. So using these features is actually helping a lot on that, on that uh, engagement part. Uh, another example is uh, geolocation to actually display personalized information uh, relevant to the user for that particular location. Um, another one is actually uh, to keeping uh, the user engaging is actually using WebGL and WebVR um, here. That's another new APIs um, to bring this virtual reality uh, to the web or even argumented uh, reality. And WebAssembly, so WebAssembly is, is gonna bring a uh, whole new possibilities for, 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 for the web because we as a web developers, we're gonna tap to this new ecosystem uh, for libraries and the binary code libraries like C, C++ and Rust. 
Um, that's actually going to increase quite a lot uh, the capabilities and, and, and for the performances as well. All right, so how can we build one uh, progressive web app? So here we're going to cover just the core parts of the, how we're going to build that. So first and foremost, we need um, security, right? So everything should be served via HTTPS. Uh, in fact, uh, the new, all those new APIs, they require a security orange. And even old APIs uh, like geolocation, uh, they now requires a, a, a security orange as well. Um, so it means the user can trust um, or, or that that particular site is actually yours. Um, they, they, the user can ensure that no one is actually trapped to that page. So give this uh, confidence to the user and integrity. So no, no one is actually leasing that connection. Um, because you know the the web is is big in terms of reach and frictionless, so keep the user safe. It's really huge important. Um, once once we have like the our secret uh, sorted, uh, now we can start to to build our app. So the first piece here is actually this uh, application shell architecture. So what is application shell? So application shell is pretty much the minimal HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that is actually common for all the pages that we, uh, your app. Uh, usually is the header, the menu, the logo, footer, all those uh, UI elements that we're gonna cache that and, and then we create this, this shell. Um, so usually they when the 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 user visits at the first time we we cache this shell and on next time they 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 visit the site that's going to load extremely quickly because that's cached and uh it's going to load really fast and the content part is actually uh, usually is uh, loaded when when we need it, and that's the dynamic part of 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 the app. All right, so um, adopting this app shell model, um, we we can create this app like experience um, with the offline support. You know, the user can still navigate. You know, open the menu and interact with the app. Um, and another advantage for this model is actually um, the, it's being designed for a minimal data usage, right? The idea is actually just download what is really essential for that particular page, um, um, page. and we know the, the data cost is quite cheap on the Western countries, but uh, that's that's not the reality for 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 emerging uh, markets. And we know the connectivity there is it's quite expensive. All right, so the next piece here is service worker. So service worker is one of the new APIs uh, that's actually behind of the most of the, the capabilities that we are talking here. And uh, that, that is really cool because you can cache uh, all the resources uh, that you need in, in your page. So pretty much we as a developer, we have the full control to manage the cache, which allows you to decide, you know, let's hit the cache or, or the network. So the service work is actually uh, this middleman between your app and, and the network and then you as a developer you have the full control here to give this uh, um, to work with the cache so another thing that actually service work uh, 
do um, is they, they, they can handle system level notification like push, push messages. Um, a push message is uh, just another type of request that service work serves. Um, so the way that actually works is um, when, when the message comes in to your app, the service work wakes up and then they call uh, on push handler and then display that notification and that toast on your, in your device. Um, and that's actually the way that the notification works. Uh, and, and the last piece here is the app manifest. Um, the app manifest is, is pretty much a, a JSON file that you can tell to the browser, you know, your web app will be and behavior uh, in this particular way, using these particular appropriates when installing uh, in your, uh, on the user's mobile device. So the key appropriates here is uh, the name uh, and short name. Uh, you can give a set of icons um, with different resolutions uh, of uh, of the of your app, um, you can point what is the uh, start URL, and another two two things here, which is which is important as well, is the theme color and the background uh, color, um, and then that's gonna give you this uh, splash screen experience. Um, so one way to actually verify if everything is set correctly uh, on the uh, on the Chrome Dev Tools, um, there's a manifest uh, pane there, and you can check and verify and pretty much debug uh, your app manifest. All right, why PWA progressive web app matters these days? All right, so it is because PWA is the future of the web. <laughs> I know, I know, that's a strong statement. Um, a few, actually, there's a few um, facts that actually support that statement. Um, in the news, uh, just recently, a couple of weeks ago, Adobe uh, decided to drop uh, the PhoneGap project and PhoneGap build project. Uh, in favor of uh, PWA, and that but that was a bold movement from from Adobe. And another thing uh, in the news is the Apple is actually increasing the the PWA support on, on the Safari on iOS 14, and um, and actually Apple is a bit slow on that. Um, on that support on PWA. Um, in my opinion, they, they, they understand that PWA is kind of a threat on the whole App Store ecosystem. Um, and that, that's, that's my view. So another way to actually look at that is um, you can ask, uh, will PWA replace uh, native apps? Um, in a couple of surveys actually says, you know, yes, but not for everyone. Of course not, because, um, you know, depend of the nature of your app, right? Because sometimes you need um, something really specific, uh, especially for games or uh, if you're using a feature like Face ID that that's not going to be on, in the, on the web. Um, and there's loads of um, benefits from, from the business perspective. Um, there's the cost of build a web app is really lower than a uh, native one. The whole staff optimization and the, the engagement and the conversion is pretty high. And there's a few companies actually prove that. Um, so Twitter, Lancome and OLX, it's a couple of example. They, they, they are having really high conversion and, and engagement. Uh, and the whole 
building process is really simplified. Um, the, and the implementation, all the updates. Um, so there's quite a lot of benefits uh, from the business perspective. So let's start one uh, use case for financial services. So this use case was a project that I've worked uh, that I've worked before I actually joined Luxoft. Um, and it's important to highlight uh, all the information here. It's not official. It was something that I got from friends and in, in my relationship there. So the project was the Vietin Bank. Uh, so the Vietin Bank is that they, they have this um, digital bank transformation program. They want to try to modernize uh, the whole digital bank express. And they start to look for a PWA possibilities and uh, on their uh, internet banking solution. And they decide to actually test the PWA in one particular feature um, was the payment flow. And just to see uh, the, the, what, what, what was the uh, expectation there. Uh, of course, they need to understand uh, in Vietin, not everybody has a, uh, uh, the bandwidth and the connectivity there. Uh, we can't take for granted. Um, sometimes it's really even harder to actually the user get the app, you know, download and install. And the PWA was a really good fit in this case uh, because um, it was simpler. And, uh, and the payment process, uh, the whole user experience, they simplified the, the payment process in just a few steps. And, and the feedback was really great. Um, just to, to, to give you an example, was like four times the re-engagement, um, which is pretty cool, 250 in more page views and 80% increase in view payments. Um, uh, it's, it's fun to, to say, you know, to pay a bill, um, that was the feedback, was, was fun to pay because the flow was, you can just scan the QR code, that's one single button to just confirm, and then later you receive this uh, message that say, you know, that uh, bill has been paid, all good. Um, after this project, they decided to actually expand uh, the whole PWA um, app and um, for more services. I don't know how many services they have these days on PWA, but uh, they definitely increase. Um, so today, the PWA mobile bank has more active users than any other uh, app client on iOS and Android. I think the reason was the, because of the app size. Um, you know, it's just one megabyte of the PWA. And if you compare with Android and, and iOS, it's 25 megabytes on Android and 190 on, on iOS. Um, so the mobile bank is it's fast. They launch from the, the, from the home screen as a full screen. Uh, experience and uh, it's rel reliable, works no matter the internet connection, and it's engaging. All right, so my final thoughts on it. Uh, so PWA is getting a momentum. Um, there's several companies actually start to building PWAs on the transportation, travel, and accommodation industries. Um, so the media and the, um, the entertainment uh, and telecom industries, they're, they're start to build in PWAs as well, and technology companies, real estate, and now fintechs, which is pretty cool. So there's benefits in all sides uh, from the customer perspective, you know, the offline support, it's really good. It's it, it has a high speed. It's consistent, and this whole app-like experience uh, is just great. From the business perspective, the cost uh, is lower. 
you can optimize your staff. There's a whole optimization there. Um, you, you just need uh, one single uh, team with one skill set. Um, the, the engagement is higher, the conversion is higher, um, and the whole simplification on the building process and, and update in terms of DevOps. Uh, and now the FinTechs is, is embracing this um, PWA, and which is something I wanna, I wanna see more. So with that, uh, thank you everybody. I'm happy to take uh, questions. Um, cool, let me see here. Is Angular a good choice for uh, PWA? I would say yes. There's um, a really good uh, support. Um, uh, is Netlify a good choice for deployment on the cloud? Yes, it is. Um, there's quite a few articles actually supporting that. Uh, and uh, Angular and PWA, is, yes, that's a really good combination as well. So what is next? There is a question about the flip side of progressive web apps. Comparing to native, yes. Mm -hmm. Need to understand the decision criteria here. Yeah, so the, yeah, it is, it, it's important to understand, um, we are talking about uh, bring, oh, bring the web app to another level, right? To increase the capability. Um, so the, of course, native apps, they, they are there. Um, the, the criteria here is actually the reach, right? So, the point is, as a business, you invest quite a lot to build a native app, uh, and and we they are not actually sure they will install that app because it is really hard them to actually find your app. If you compare that to the web, um, to find something or to access new apps, it's quite uh, higher. Um, in that sense, uh, the progressive web app has a, has a better advantage there. Uh, what is the next? I've encountered a problem with updating some cache in for your clients. Yes, so that was a problem before. Um, um, and yeah, when, when you have a cache on the client side, is always a, a, a problem. Um, but uh, Jake, which is one of the Google developers, and he actually wrote the spec for the service work. He gave a talk another day saying this um, and have a multi version on the client side and how we're going to invalidate and, and bring the, the new one. Um, I recommend you to to take a look on that on that talk, uh, but there's actually few techniques to to ensure you always um, bring the latest version and how we, how you invalidate the 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 old version to bring the the new one. So there's a few techniques and um, and so just to sum up, we can have multi versions on the client and um, pretty much invalidate um, as we go. What is the next one? There are four questions actually related from the same person. Uh, so the RPAs are more exposed to men in the middle attacks compared to native apps. Should we use a more encrypted transport layer or implement extra cryptography for data packets on top of HTTPs? enough to counter a man in the middle attacks? Yeah, so the, the, yeah. 
they, you know, they, the encryptation part or actually the HTTP actually ensure the security between your client and, and your service. So between the connection, that's, that's, it's always good there. Um, one thing that could happen and we need to always make sure is actually the cross, uh, cross scripting on the client side. And that's actually the vulnerability there. Um, and that's a, actually a whole separate uh, question because um, there's loads of uh, techniques to actually prevent or even in your app, web app to, to uh, ensure that, that that's not gonna happen. Uh, especially on the ATP headers, you can um, pretty much uh, have an extra um, had their information to, you know, not allow any any cross uh, script. Um, yeah, but technically, HTTPS is actually uh, enough on that sense. What else? What could be the use cases for PVA in lending industry for banks while assessing the credibility of borrower? um sorry come 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 back again sorry. yeah what could be the use cases for pwa in lending industry for banks while assessing credibility of borrower all right so for bankings um yeah there's there's a few use cases um and especially for for lending uh area um one is actually when you, let's say you are, um, your performance debt lending um, um, package and uh, you wanna, you wanna, you know, keep, keep looking that process and see uh, the status of that application. So, um, I don't know if that that's actually answer your question. Um, I'm not sure if I got that correctly. Uh, um, so, what is the which one market? is that? Um, so, this is in in answer it section. Uh, we can come back to that one. So there are the other ones as well. So what is the current market share for BWA? Yeah, BWA is getting momentum. Um, actually, uh, it is hard to 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 give a exactly number for that, but um, because uh, it is it is a bit bit hard to differentiate between a PWA and a, a regular web app because a regular web app is, um, in terms of numbers, they, they can't actually uh, distinct. So, um, but it's getting momentum. A lot of companies actually starting to building PWAs um, or actually pretty much taking that web app and give the PWA uh, enhancement. Um, that's why the name Progressive uh, on Progressive Web Apps. Actually, you you give that more capabilities, and uh, I would say you know most of the app from scratch these days uh, they are always thinking about uh, PWA because PWA is not just on mobile. Um, there's a desktop uh, support as well. And um, for instance, you can uh, install uh, a PWA on a Chromebook or um, um, yeah, or on desktop as well. So uh, that's a really good uh, example there. So there's a question here about PWA, it's better than Xamarin or React Native. Yeah, so that's a different stuff, right? So when, when you talk about cross-platform um, uh, solutions, um, so Xamarin is actually uh, native and compiled. Um, 
a compiled kind of solution, which is Xamarin and React Native is actually on the same same group. So um, PWA is actually browser um, browser and web browser. It's not even hybrid, right? When you talk about hybrid apps, which is cross-platform as well, we are talking about take a, a web app and wrap in a, in a, in a using a Cordova, for instance, and then install that in your device. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a that's a different scenario. It really depends on your uh, business case. But if you, if your concern is budgeting and money, I would say go for PWA first rather than uh, React Native or, or Xamarin. So there's a question here about does PWA need a lot of specifications, memory process or space? Um, the spec of the PWAs, um, it is really, really small. It's pretty much the same spec of a regular web app. Um, and uh, they actually, they try to or tend to be smaller than a traditional web app because uh, the whole app shell approach that I mentioned, uh, which is uh, one of the, the architecture design there, um, and the whole performance budget that you, you have to set uh, when you start the project, uh, it is more uh, towards to have a really lean spec and and even um, even in terms of how many uh, libraries that you need to use, they tend to be really uh, thin. I use Ionic Framework uh, in Angular. It, it is in a big components or uh, hang on, let me. Can you help me with this question? So the, the, this guy is asking is uh, that he uses Ionic framework based on Angular and how do you can best predict that? So that some companies still persist on native and he uses Ionic. Yeah, so the Ionic framework is pretty um, cool. Um, and they have like a PWA support as well these days. Um, and um, and big companies actually, uh, they, they always um, tend to, to, to not like hybrid uh, approach, which is ironically is a hybrid approach, um, because in the past they they there was was not that um, um, the performance was not that great, and uh, on that time was wasn't a, a a perfect solution, and most of the companies actually had this impression that you know hybrid solution with Ionic was was not that great, um, but you know now these days because the the app or the mobile um, spec and uh, the mobile uh, capabilities really uh, great and especially for performance is really good. Um, it, today is really hard to to see the difference between in terms of performance between a native and, and a, a hybrid app, um, especially on these uh, high-end uh, devices like iPhone or, or the latest or uh, really good Android phone. And um, yeah, that's, that's, that's a case for, for each uh, company. Um, it's really depend, I would say. <laughs> All right, uh, let me see. Can I put a PWA app to the Google Play Store or the store? Yes, the answer is yes. Uh, today you can use a PWA, uh, you can 
have a PWA on a, a Android uh, on an Android store or on the Play Play store, um, and I believe um, on, on app on App Store from from iOS, uh, they are planning to actually have that as well. So uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure how how much support on, on iOS, but uh, for the Android, I'm pretty sure um, the PWA, uh, it is there. On the Android Play, um, Google Play. All right, uh, what is this? Um, There are questions about um, where is the server work allocated on the user device or somewhere else? Yeah, so the service worker is actually part of the, the browser. That's part of the platform uh, these days. It's, uh, it's a spec on the, on the platform. And um, once you install um, your PWA, um, that service work is actually uh, it is it is working uh, on the same process of your device, so it means they can, for instance, to receive a push notification, they, they there's a subscription to actually uh, receive that uh, message. So yeah, it is part of the browser. There's one question here about uh, is browser agnostic. Um, this means can I access a PWA from an iPhone to a Chrome browser? Yes, uh, yes, you can access uh, your PWA from a Chrome browser, and actually, that's 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 the that's the web, right? So um, you just need a browser, and then you can access uh, uh, access your app um, on on. Uh, the, the PWA support on, on iOS, for instance, is not 100% there, um, but lots, um, there's quite a, quite a bit of features that is actually working. And one thing that's interesting to say, um, Apple is saying key, and they, they are slow to implement because uh, there's a concern in terms of um, a privacy uh, they don't want to implement few 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 things uh, on on the browser, and that that's a really long debate. Um, I have my view on that, but anyway, all right. Well, what is next? Um, which framework is best for PW? And I want to know if I can access GPS of mobile phone and is it less secure than native or not? Yeah, in terms of security, um, the geolocation, um, it, is, uh, it is the same. So if you are on HTTPS, it's all good in terms of uh, location. It's pretty much similar to the same um, uh, location that you have on natively um, in terms of feature. Uh, and the best framework for PWA, uh, so from my experience, uh, Ionic is actually giving out of the box most of the tools that you need. Uh, and Ionic these days, they have um, uh, other flavors as well, not just uh, Angular, so now, we can build it on React and, and Vue, um, and even um, using the web components, um, because now they, they have these, um, uh, they offer all the, the UI uh, elements as a web component as well. So I would say uh, Ionic, but 
um, there's few boilerplates on, on GitHub that you can that you can use. But my recommendation is Ionic. What else? Um, I can take those uh, those questions uh, and answer uh, later. Um, uh, I think we are on the time, right? Yes, definitely. So we have time for one more question and that's it. Um, so you can pick there five questions in the box if you can pick one. But the browser is a third-party software. So this is mean PWA can easy, easier compromised. Um, I don't think so because you know the web is is the reach of the web is it's 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 higher, right? So even if you are if you if, the same way that you need to install one app. Uh, so browser is one app as well, right? So uh, I don't see as a compromise um, because the web is, is everywhere, right? So, and it, you, you just need to, to pick one, one, one browser and say, you know, I'm gonna go for, for this one, but you know, web is, is um, it's super uh, rich. Um, you can even use web without a web browser. That's a weird thing to say, but um, imagine, yeah, the, the, the pretty much the, the web is, is um, is you know rich enough and yeah browser is one of the softwares they are great thank you very much again luis and no worries some of you guys asked if the recording will be available it will be it will be published on luxsoft facebook linkedin and youtube channels so please subscribe if you haven't and uh, you'll find out we'll also send it out to everyone who registered to this marathon so thank you again. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and hopefully we'll see you guys tomorrow for our second talk. Thank you guys. Bye.